Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a Huatli the Sun's Heart High Alert High Toughness Matters deck. Now with High Alert each creature we control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and creatures we control can attack as though they didn't have defender and we can also use it to untap our creatures. But with Watley, the Sun's Heart, each creature also assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, but it doesn't have the clause where defenders can attack as though they didn't have defender, which means that we have to build a deck with Watley in mind, so we don't have any creatures with defender in the deck, we simply have a lot of high toughness creatures that can still attack even without the high alert in play. And then Huatli has the added upside of the minus 3 ability, gaining life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures we control. So the game plan of the deck is very simple, spend the first couple turns deploying high toughness creatures, and then ideally on turn 3 play a Huatli or a high alert and get in there for a ton of damage. And of course having both high alert and Huatli gives the deck the much needed redundancy, so we can make sure we have at least one in our opening hand. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, we decided to keep the deck blue-white to make the mana base more streamlined. The advantage advantage of dipping into green is that you can play with a card like Tower Defense, which can represent a lot of extra damage out of nowhere, but Ages of the Heavens is not a bad replacement, giving target creature plus 1 plus 7 until end of turn, which essentially represents 7 additional damage with a Huatli or High Alert in play. Then at 1 mana we've got lots of 4 toughness creatures, the full playset of a Yoked Ox, we've got Murfolk Secret Keeper, we're not going to use the adventure, just play it out as a 1 mana 04, and then the Arena All-Star Shurkomer Crab. Then at 2 mana, the new addition from Anthology, Nyx Fleece Ram, as a 2 mana 05 that also gains 1 life at the beginning of our upkeep. Then we've got 4 copies of Fae of Wishes as a 2 mana 1 4 flyer, so it can get a ton of damage in, in the air. And we can also use the Adventure later in the game for 4 mana. And we've got a nice uh, sideboard here, which I'll go over in just a second. Next up we have two copies of Tetsuko Mizawa as a 2 mana 1-3 legendary creature saying creatures we control with power or toughness 1 or less can be blocked, which is the case for every single creature in our deck. So against opposing creature decks that gives the deck some much needed evasion. And then we have four copies of Surge Mare as a 2 mana 5 that can be blocked by green creatures. And when Surge Mare deals damage to an opponent we can draw a card and discard a card. So it gives us some card selection so we can discard lands in the late game. Or maybe additional copies of High Alert that we don't need. And then we've got our two copies of Ages of the Heavens. And then our eight enablers, High Alert and Huatli, which we pretty much need to have in our opening hand for this deck to function. And then the mana base is very streamlined, 5 planes, 11 islands, 4 glacial fortress and 4 hallowed fountain. And then going over the sideboard that we can access with our Fae of Wishes, you'll notice a lot of cheap spells, since our deck doesn't make a ton of mana, so we just wanna use the 4-mana adventure and potentially cast whatever spell we just got out of the sideboard right away. So we've got some uh, cheap interaction here in the form of Stern Dismissal and Unsummon, if we need to bounce a creature or an enchantment for cheap. We've got a Spell Pierce as a cheap counter spell. Dive Down can be used as a way to save our creature from removal or as a combat trick, dealing 3 extra damage. We have some uh, Graveyard Hate with Gravedigger's Cage. Shadow Spear can give us some life gain. We've got another Ages of the Heavens. Baffling Ends as removal. We've got another counter spell in the form of Dovin's Veto. Spyglass to shut down activated abilities. More removal with Banishing Lights. Slaughter the Strong can also be a nice sweeper effect against other creature heavy decks. And then we've got uh, Mystical Dispute as another 1 mana counter spell against blue decks. Conclave Tribunal can sometimes be easier to play than a Banishing Light. And then Sleep can be another finisher tapping down all the opponent's creatures. So pretty versatile sideboard, but definitely a focus on cheap spells. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Reasonable hand, we'll need a third land, especially a blue source would come in handy. Because right now I wouldn't be able to triple one drop into Huatli. Alright, still don't quite get to curve out perfectly, but... Uh the life gain from Huatli could definitely come in handy against the red deck. Although, the downside is that they could potentially use burn spells to finish her off. The islands uh, turn late. Mm, 
wizard lining the yoke docks. That's fine. So yeah, I don't want to play Watley quite yet, so we'll just go Surge Mare and then next turn I can cramp plus Watley. Although I will have to be more careful with how I block. It's probably safe to block the Firebrands with the Surge Mare. Although they could go like 3 damage burn spell and then use counters from Steamkin to play Chain Whirler to finish it off. But also don't want to take any unnecessary damage. Opponent passes. So now the question is, do I minus the Hotly? Probably not. And I could also keep Surge Mare on defense. Because attacking with Surge Mare, if they have another Wizard's Lining, I would lose Surge Mare. Which doesn't seem worth it. And it's also playing defense pretty well. And our opponent probably will need to use a lot of burn to kill Huatli. And then hopefully we'll draw another one, or a high alert. Interesting attack, so... If they do have two more 3 damage burn spells and use a firebrand, they could finish off Watley, in which case blocking with the crab on the steamkin doesn't quite work out. What's the alternative? Just put, like, Surge Mare on steamkin, and then they might be... One damage short of killing the Surge Mare. If they have to use a Firebrand on Hotly. And then Crab can go on Pyromancer just fine. I guess that's fine too. This way if they do kill Hotly, I don't lose any of my creatures. And I'm still fine trading Surge Mare for Steamkin and a Burn Spell. Alright, so they do have Wizard's Lining. And Lightning Strike, and they'll use the Firebrands. Alright, so we did essentially 3 for one them here with uh, Hotly. Didn't lose any of my creatures yet. Although Skewer the Critics will uh, finish it off. And there's a backup Hotly, alright. Probably fine to send both. Got a crab on defense. And that should just about wrap things up. All at Watley, kill the Steamkin. And sure, Chromer Crab for lethal. Even the Fae of Wishes to wish for a sideboard card if needed. Sweet, beating up on Monorant always feels nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a uh, reasonable hand. Would have been nicer with a Hallowed Fountain or an Island. But I'll keep... Still gonna play the Glacial Fortress so that if we do draw an Island, I can go double Secret Keeper, which is better than one Nyx Fleece Ram. So in this case, do I want to play the Ram, or do I play a blue one drop and a tapped Glacial Fortress? If I were to draw an Island next turn, I guess it doesn't matter, because I only have the two blue one drops remaining. So in that case, I think I'll just play Ram. Opponent on maybe a vampire deck or just a white aggro deck. There's Watley. Just gonna play a crab and a secret keeper. And then next turn we can start attacking. Oh, 
Our opponent could have Conclave Tribunal to exile our three mana plays. But Knowledge Marshal still doesn't really enable a great attack. Fear Wishes could be useful too. So I could play it slow, just play the Fear Wishes and then the Secret Keeper next turn smash. But smashing this turn is also tempting. Probably do it with the High Alerts since Watley could die on the way back. Opponent takes it down to 7. A Jani, Adversary of Tyrants. Can play some counters. Alright. Yoke Talks. So... I think we're just going face here. Make some trades. Opponent gonna chum the ram, pay for life, which is cheaper than taking five. And then just playing the fail wishes gives me a lethal threat in the air, so I kind of like that idea. Pride mates into vanguards. It's not bad. Can go up to four, but they're gonna need the city's blessing here for this to gain flying. And they're one permanent shorts. And if they tribunal the high alerts, I've got Watley to still kill them. So yeah, Fave Wishes is gonna get across the finish line. Sweet, managed to beat Mono White Aggro, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand's okay. Sadly no double blue, so don't quite get to curve out the way we want to, but we still have double Secret Keeper into Watley on turn 3. Got a backup just in case. Put on cycles a lonely sandbar. Could this be the uh, treasure hunt deck? All right, sure looks like it. Should have a fast enough clock here to kill them. More Hotleys. So I've got a three turn clock. So unless your opponent gets lucky and the Thassa's Oracle's like literally their last cards. We should be able to get there. Alright, they found Oracle this turn, so now they would definitely wouldn't be able to kill me before I kill them. Could also randomly mill one of their key cards with the Secret Keeper. I guess they could have the last treasure hunt in hand. But yeah, if they're putting it back, they can sandbar draw it. Cast it, but then they still need to cast a Thassa's Oracle. So it'll be one mana short. 
and they still have another treasure hunt in their deck, so yeah, they're definitely not killing us anytime soon. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands fine. We'll need to find a third land, ideally a blue source. For now, probably lead with the crab. Since uh, blue mana might be a bottleneck. Opponent with the turn to gross peril. Alright, I guess we'll just play double yoke talks. And then hope to draw land next turn. Could attack to send a message. Rejuvenator, so looks like a Field of the Dead a ramp deck of sorts. And there's land three. Get in for 12. Don't think we'll need to minus. Ooh, time wipe. Alright. Get to rebuild with the uh, Surge Mare and the Nyx Fleece Ram. And Surge Mare can be chum blocked by the Rejuvenator, which is nice. There's Golos. Gets fields but they won't make a zombie right away. And these five toughness creatures do line up quite well against Golos at least. So we'll attack. Opponent has to jump. So... I don't think I want to play more stuff out into another time wipe potentially for opponents. Plays Rejuvenator, let's say they make a zombie as well. I guess I want one more creature in play to make sure I can kill them. Alright, we'll play one Surge Mare. It's gonna be an Agent of Treachery. Oof. I guess it's just gonna steal my Huatli. But then... Um, I still have Surge Mares that can attack. So we'll see. They're gonna steal Surge Mare instead, fair enough. No reason to activate it. But now they're still chum blocking, so it's not that bad. So now do I play another Surge Mare out? I really don't want to, but they might be able to make two zombies next turn. And then I won't have lethal. And if they have a time wipe, I probably lose if I just have the one search mare to follow up. So there's a rejuvenator. Finds a mountain, but makes a zombie, and a Thassa can flick a Rejuvenator, making another zombie. So they have to triple chum block here, assuming they make another zombie. More Surge Mares, so let's get in there. I guess I'm all in at this point. It's a fairy time raveler, sure. Sorry, I'm late. 
gonna bounce the search mare. And another Golos finding Field of the Dead, so that's a bunch more blockers. They can flicker Golos with Thassa. Get another Field of the Dead. Yeah, this is starting to get out of hand. I need to find a Fae of Wishes pretty much to find a sideboard card to end the game. Yoked Ox. I think I'm still attacking them, but... Don't love the spots. Spin the wheel with Golos. Crisis for zero, not too impressive. But Rejuvenator means a lot of zombies. So they've got all four Field of the Deads. So four zombies per land. Probably gets Fabled Passage here. No Fabled Passages. Well, all I can do is play some Defenders out, but... At this point, I think we're just... Uh, dead on board, maybe? Suppose I should have gained life with Watley. Gain 5 up to 26. But I don't think that would have uh, mattered here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, pretty good looking hands. Temple of Mystery tapped. And a Leafkin Druids. Alright, so we'll get Resolver Watley. Could go 1 drop plus 2 drop first, but if they are playing counter spells, I want to make sure this resolves. I shall wield this power for good. And no need to minus. Opponent is on Teamer Elementals. Uro gains a bit of life back. Well, let's get uh, Smashing. And then I'll probably keep the Fail Wishes to wish for. Definitely don't want to mill my opponent when they have Uro. Alright, GG's.
yeah, sometimes you get easy games like this. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's very good if we draw a third land in two draw steps, so we'll try. The triple one drop openers are the ones that uh, tend to be the most explosive. And we've got the uh, mana to do it here. Perfect. Gruel Guildgate, so probably some sort of uh, Field of the Dead deck. But yeah, we're getting in for 12 damage on turn 3. And no sweepers gonna save them here. We even have the backup Watley in case the High Lord gets answered somehow. And our opponent explodes. Easy peasy, turn 3 win. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a very solid hand. Yoke Tox into Surge Mare, into High Alert, maybe keep the Fair Wishes so we can adventure first. Facing a Temple of Epiphany. All right, hopefully the high alert resolves. Also get to loot away a land thanks to Surge Mare. And our opponent explodes. Well, the deck definitely has some... Uh, very powerful starts. Haven't had too many issues with having the Huatli or the High Alert in my opening hand, and usually only takes one mulligan to get there, so the deck is very consistent, but especially if we're on the draw and the opponent has a timely sweeper, it can be difficult to recover, since we don't have a great backup plan after we deploy our first wave of creatures, so the Fae of Wishes is probably the best late game our deck can offer, and in the games we play today I don't even think we wished with the Fae of Wishes even once, Although in the practice games I played with the deck on stream, we did get a couple uh, bounce spells with it or dive downs, so it can definitely come in handy, but if you don't want to spend the wild cards on the sideboard cards, it's totally not necessary, just toss in a couple of those uh, cheap one mana plays and you'll be fine. And besides the mana base, the only rare in the main deck is the Fae of Wishes, so the deck is actually surprisingly budget friendly. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.